In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the maximum value of a directional derivative in 2D. The first question reads, if the function f at x, y is equal to 3xy cubed plus x squared y, find the maximum rate of change at the point 1 and negative 2. At what direction should the point move so that the function increases the fastest or decreases the fastest? That being said, the maximum rate of change of a directional derivative can be calculated by finding the magnitude of the gradient vector. So we need to find the gradient vector for this function, and that's found by taking the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, then with respect to y, and evaluate those two functions at 1 and negative 2. You'll end up with two values, the x component of your gradient vector and the y component of your gradient vector. Also what's been said here is that the gradient vector, or its unit vector, so either or, evaluated at the point P is the direction in which the function increases most rapidly. So let's go ahead and find the gradient vector by finding the gradient of our function x, y. We'll start with f of x, and in case you're confused about what this means, that's the directional derivative, that symbol is nabla, and I've noted that right here, that the directional derivative of your function, or its gradient, can be represented as a vector with its x and y component. And that's what these letters represent, i hat and j hat. So with that being said, to find the partial derivative of this, we'll start with the first term. We'll keep y to the power of 3 constant. And taking the derivative of x is 1. So we have 3y cubed plus 2xy. I use the power rule for both situations. We'll evaluate this soon at 1 and negative 2. The partial derivative of the function with respect to y, starting here, we have 3y squared, and we'll keep 3x constant, plus x squared. Once again, we'll evaluate this at 1 and negative 2. If I evaluate this at 1 and negative 2, you should end up with negative 28, and evaluating this, you should end up with 37. So the gradient of f at x, y can be represented by the vector negative 28 and 37. Now we're expected to find the maximum rate of change at the point 1 and negative 2. And according to this, we can do that by calculating the magnitude of the gradient vector. This is the gradient vector, and the magnitude can be calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll take the square root of negative 28 and square that, plus 37 squared, and that should give us the gradient's magnitude. That's represented by these double absolutes. So using our calculator, I already have it set up. This gives us 46.4. So approximately 46.4. Now remember, they're also asking for the direction in which the function increases the fastest. For that, you can simply report negative 28 and 37 this gradient vector, or you can find the unit vector by taking 46.4 and dividing each of these numbers by that. So it's up to you, and in case you're lost, the unit vector is found by taking the vector itself, its components, and dividing it by the magnitude. They also ask decreases the fastest, and rather than using positive 46.4 when you find your unit vector, and if you find your unit vector, use the negative version of 46.4, because remember we square rooted this, so there's a positive and negative version. So by using the negative version, you can take negative 28, the x component, divided by negative 46.4, and take 37 and divide it by negative 46.4, and this represents the vector where the function is decreasing the fastest. So that's the answer to question number one. And before we move on, I want to show you what this looks like, this graph on a contour map. So here's the contour map of this expression. Take a look. And we're at the point 1 and negative 2. So that's right here. 1 and negative 2 is somewhere right here. I'll place a dot at approximately that point. And we just found out that the maximum increase occurs at negative 28 and 37. So rather than using negative 28 and 37, I can use the unit vector instead by dividing negative 28 by 46.4. And that gives us the 
x component of our unit vector, negative 0 0.60. Let's write that down, negative 0 0.60. And taking 37, dividing that by 46.4, gives us approximately 0 0.80. Let's graph that. Negative 0 0.60 is right there and positive 0 0.80 is right here. From here to here is when it moves the fastest. But it's not just a straight line. It always has to cross each of these contours at 90 degrees. So this has to pass at 90 degrees. That has to pass at 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees until it reaches the point. Now if you'd like to see the answer to question number two, make sure you watch part two of this series where we cover this question.